are in the series of the art of living. So all this month we're looking at principles, uh, values that we need to apply to our life in order to live a life that is, that is honoring to God, honoring to God, and, and a life, most of all, uh, that is worth living. We want to honor God and we want to live a life that is worth living. So uh, go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to read verses 11 through 13. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. And if you can, if you're, if you're able, if, you're, if you have the ability to do so, you're not holding a child or, or you're not having any issues with your legs, join us in standing. Join us in standing. My grandfather, the late Reverend Dr. Joseph Lee Jr., <clears throat> the founder of this church, he would always say every weekend, every Sunday, every time he stood at the podium, he said, when we open the Bible, we open God's mouth. And I believe that we ought to be at attention to hear and receive what the Lord is saying. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. We should be there together. I'm reading out of the English Standard Version, just, just for a clear understanding. But I'm sure whatever version you have uh, will work just fine. This saying is trustworthy that if we have died with him we will also live with him verse 12 says if we endure we will also reign with him if we deny him we all he also will deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. I'm glad about that last verse. I'm glad about that last verse. For a few minutes, as you take your seats, we want to talk on the subject of faithfulness. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. I want to talk on the subject of faithfulness. Amen? Amen, amen. When we speak of faithfulness, there are two major concepts that we have to wrestle with. When we talk about the idea, the concept, the virtue, the value of faithfulness, there are two main concepts that we have to deal with. Number one is fidelity. Everybody say fidelity. Fidelity, this speaks of loyalty and support that is based on a covenant or a decision. In other words, right being. Fidelity speaks of loyalty, speaks, it speaks of, of somewhat of a, a, a support or, or a commitment that is based on a covenant, much like a marriage. When you come to the altar, and I'm excited, there will be some, some more marriages we see in 2019. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. It's wedding season again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so we're going to see some new, some new marriages. And, and, and when we see these people stand at the altar, they're going to make the same vows. They're going to say, do you, will you, for better or for worse, I do, I hope, Lord help me. You know, all those, all those good things, right? They create a bond. They create a covenant there. We make support. We make promises, pledges of support. We say, this is what we're going to do here in Heavenly Vision. You're going to be hearing more about it. We, we have an initiative that, that, that is called All In. And, and it's just those of us who are serious about what God is doing in this house and what he's doing in our life. We're going to make a commitment. We're going to, we're going to make a decision to, to give our full support. We're going to, we're going to support in our, in our presence, in our service, in our giving. And we're also going to commit ourselves to being supported by pastors. We're going to submit ourselves in, 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 that, in that concept, and that is a sense of fidelity. It's based on a covenant or a decision. I made my mind up that I'm going to be this to you. That speaks of right being. So we have to have fidelity. If you're going to be faithful to anything or anybody, you have to first make up in your mind that you're going to do it. Are you going to be faithful to me? I don't know. How many of you would, would, 
<laughs> would pursue a relationship with somebody if at the beginning of it you said, hey, uh, you going to be faithful to me? Mm, I don't think about it. Okay. You know, no, no, no. We, we need to know that even at the, at, 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 the, at the beginning, at the genesis of this relationship, you're making a decision to be faithful, to have fidelity. And this is why, again, marriages, you, 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 don't, you, don't, just, you don't just lock hands and say, we marry. Okay, we marry. Y'all pray for me. This, this, why, this is why I got an issue with folks saying wifey and husband and they ain't made a covenant. They can be bae all day long. Amen. They, they can be bae all they want to, you know, WCW, MCM, call them whatever you want them, but don't call them husband or wife unless y'all have made a covenant. Because I know there's some real husbands and wives in here that's like, wait a minute. This costs. This is not just a change of status on social media. <laughs> There, 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 is, there is pain, sweat, tears, blood. Talk to me, married people. There's a lot in this. So you can't just up in one day and say, you wifey. You my hubby. Oh, it costs too, me too much to be a husband. <laughs> uh, women, come on. Those of you who've given your body for your children and your husband, come on. It costs you too much to be somebody's wife and mama. Not just, we're not just handing out titles because it's cute. There, there's, there's, there's a, you with my husband? Yeah. You with my wife? Yeah. No, it ain't just a ring, I promise. <laughs> and that's, that's a cost too, glory to God. We're going to go there tonight. We're going to go there today. But not only does it speaks of fidelity, does it speak of fidelity, but it also speaks of consistency. Everybody say consistency. Wow. Let's deal with this. This speaks of the act of achievement of a level of performance that does not vary greatly in quality over time. I hope you see it on your screen. It, it, talks, about, it talks about the achievement, the achievement of a level of performance that does not vary greatly in quality over time. Fidelity is about right being. Consistency is about right doing. And let me put this caveat into consistency. Uh, it's only really consistency if it's excellent or acceptable. Let, let, me, let, me, let me, true consistency has to be acceptable and hopefully it should be excellent. Because some of us can be consistently negative. We can consistently fail. No, when we talk about consistency and the concept of faithfulness, we're talking about achieving a level, uh, a level of performance that doesn't change. I believe that we should always mature and matriculate and become better and become greater, but at least we should have a level of consistency in the relationships that we forge in our lives. All of us thrive off consistency. And if even in the most menial of things, if it is not consistent, we have issue. Let me give you an example. How many of you have been shopping at, at a certain type of market for a long time? And they all of a sudden want to change the aisles. Somebody talk to me for a minute. They start moving the products around and, you know, the meat is not where the meat used to be. And the, the vegetables, as my granddaddy would say. Uh, in, uh, in, so, or in a different place, and, and your favorite go-to snack is considered a seasonal item. And now it's moved to something. You're like, wait a minute, what's going on? You want to find, hey, uh, uh, where did, somebody in a red shirt, where, who were that? You're trying to figure out, you know, or the blue smock, whichever, whichever one you go to. There's only two stores nowadays. It's really happening. It's only going to be two stores in a while, I promise. Y'all pray for us. The reality is, we are creatures of habit. And so we thrive in consistency. We need things to be where they're supposed to be or where they're, we are, they are normally. We need our barber 
to be our barber. Come on. We, we, you know, mo most of us, most of us, we don't go get our hair cut by a whole bunch of people. Person who been cutting your hair, been cutting your hair. Come on, ladies. The person who been doing your sew ins been doing your sew ins You hear me? Person who been doing your braids, been doing your braids. And this is just how it is. The places you've been going, you've been going. The things you've been doing, you've been doing. Why? Because it has become a habit. But more than a habit, we are creatures uh, that thrive in consistency. And so if you are going to thrive and if you are going to be a faithful person, you need to operate in consistency. Can the people in your life count on you? Will you be there? Will you be there consistently? It should not be a case of you're here today, gone today. <laughs> You know, it used to be here today, gone tomorrow. Now some folk, they just, you know, they MIA all together. The reality is we have to make sure that we are determining within ourselves that we are going to live in consistency. If I said I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to be here even, here it is, help, help the young people for a minute, even when it gets boring. Because the, the reality about relationships is that it won't always be exciting. Uh, all, all of our couples, I, I, I encourage you to join us this Friday night for relationships. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have fun games. It's going to be really, it's going to be really enjoyable. And, and one of the things that, that I need you to understand is we're going to have a real fun night, but, but marriage is not always fun. Relationships are sometimes hard work. And we cannot bail out because of the issue of the moment. We have to be consistent. If I said I was going to love you, I'm going to keep loving you. It's easy to love somebody when, when they are in a certain frame. I'm going to stay right there so I don't get in trouble this week. It's easy to love somebody when they are doing everything that you love. It's easy to be present when you get in presence. But there will come a season oh, where frames change and that which is lovable or that which you love rather is not so lovable. There'll come a season when the gift train will stop. Now the question remains, will we be consistent? Will we hang in there? When we look at our text of focus, verses 11 and 12, they're pretty straightforward. The first concept that comes out of this is, one, our relationship with Christ is based on our submission to him. If you're going to have a relationship with Christ, it's based on our submission. Notice, it's not based on how good we are. It's based on how we submit. God knows you're not perfect. So you don't have to front for God or his people. Amen, somebody. I, I, know, I know in the church system and in the church world, and, and we've seen for years that everybody fronts and they act like, oh, God bless you, I'm blessing the Lord, highly favored, and, you know, I've never seen and I'm good, and, you know, you know, I just got a million-dollar check in the mail, and thank God for that, you know, I don't have any help. <clears throat> I'm not coughing, I'm good, I'm hailing the Lord, you know. I get all of that good stuff. But we can be honest. We can be real. We can be transparent. All we have to do is just submit to the Lord. Lord, here am I. I got problems. I got issues. I got struggles. And even though me and my wife are smiling right now, you don't know what happened in the bedroom before we got here. It's heavy sometimes. Uh, but we're here. And not just here physically, but, but spiritually, proverbially. Lord, I, I, I submit my life to you. I'm here. That's, that's the basis of our relationship. And really, that should be the basis of our relationship with everybody else as well. How we submit to one another. Let me help somebody. Because I know, brothers, I know that, that, that we're going to make our wives say and obey in the vows. And ain't nothing wrong with that. But we have to understand that, that there is a concept that the, that the Bible presents to us that, that denotes mutual submission. So not only must she submit to me, but I have to in turn submit to her. 
Because I, I think God gave her his spirit too. I think she actually has a brain. I think she actually has intelligence. I think she's actually experienced life before I came into her life. She knows some things, and so we have to submit to one another. And even in the relationship that we build, we have to have submission. And so ultimately, it tells us that our relationship with Christ is based on our submission to him. Secondly, it tells us that our endurance produces elevation. Here's what I need you to I catch on this. Everybody is saved if they give their life to Jesus. But now, in church, in life, especially, especially in spiritual things, we try to figure out, why does it seem like some people are more spiritual than others? Why does it seem like their prayers are answered quicker than mine? Why does it seem like they just a little bit closer to Jesus than me? What, what, why is my Holy Ghost never like the same as theirs? It is not to say that they're any greater than you. Some of us have a deeper level of, of spiritual girth simply because we've had to endure more. I, I, I learned this, that, that there were preachers that I admired in my life and, and, and I almost coveted their anointing until I understood why they were so anointed. Anointing is a lot like oil. And oil, uh, olive oil in particular, comes from olives. I, I know that was deep, I know that was deep. <coughs> olive oil comes from olives. <laughs> But the amazing thing about how you get the olives, they have to go through a press. And so the more oil we want from the olive, the harder it has to be pressed. And so be very careful of how much anointing you ask for. Be very careful of how much spiritual authority you ask for. Because God will say, if you want it, you want it. You got it. And he will press your life. And everything you thought you had will be crushed under the weight of his glory. And you will think you're dying. And in fact you are. Because Paul says I'm crucified with Christ. But nevertheless I live. But it's not I that live. Because I was crushed under the pressure. And so all this oil you see in my life. All this prophetic grace. All this, all this thing you. Yeah because I've been homeless. Well, you so anointed, yeah, because I was so homeless. You so anointed because I was so sick. You so anointed because I was so broke. Because I was so down. I was, I, I, I was torn down to the last. Any good football coach will tell you, we got to tear these boys down to build them up again. We got to tear down self and build in them team. We got to tear down individualism and build in them uniformity. So he says the only way you, you, you will get elevation, here it is. I, I know we live in a quick culture where, 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 you, can, where you can, you can, you can, you know, upload a video and become famous. You know, you can, you, you can, you can, you can become, become instant celebrity. And that's cute. And enjoy your 15 minutes. But if you want real elevation, if you want the elevation that gives you perspective and sight, you're going to have to endure to get that family. You will have to endure to get that elevation. And so please, don't, don't hate on anybody that, that's elevated a little higher than you. Just keep on going. Keep on striving. Keep on pushing because elevation is coming for you too. Can I prophesy to somebody? I feel like somebody, if you just make it out of August, there is an elevation in September. Because you've been faithful in a few things. I feel like God is saying, I'm getting ready to make somebody a ruler over many. Because they've been faithful there. You said what you had to say. People didn't like it. They were mad at it. But you, you stayed where everybody else was going and everybody else was calling it quits. You stayed. And even though folk told you to leave, you stuck right and you endured. And he says, if you, if you, if you endure with me, you will reign. That reign speaks of elevation. But then he also says, if you deny Christ... He will respect our wishes. De deny me. 
I don't, I don't want to obey. I don't want to do what you say. I don't want to go in your way. Okay. Here's what I love about God. He never makes anybody do anything. Where your Bibles? Where your, read, read your whole Bible. Your whole Bible. I had a professor once that said, Genesee to Revelation. I don't know how they were professor, but <laughs> hallelujah. Listen, you must know that God is not going to force you to do it. He's not going to make you be, be, be anything that he's created you to be. It has to be a choice. Free will. He says choose. But if you choose not to, he says, I will respect your wishes. But then when we find ourselves in apostate place, when we find ourselves in a place where we don't hear the voice of God any longer, when we find ourselves in a place where we don't feel the presence or the power of God any longer, don't think it's strange that your prayers are not answered. Don't think it's strange that you don't feel the power, the authority, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because you said you didn't want me. You denied me. You rejected my sovereignty, says the Lord. And so since you don't want me to be your God, I won't. I'll just be God. I'll just, I'll just stay Elohim. I won't be Yahweh. See, Elohim speaks of the supreme one, the, 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 the Lord of all the earth. But Yahweh speaks of personal God. He's my God. He's, he's my God. God. He, he, he's, he, he's my Lord and, and my Savior. And whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to obey him. And as you obey him, he will build you. But watch this. If you decide not to submit to God, he's not going to tear you down. He'll let yourself and life do that. I love how when he says to, to the Israelites in, in Deuteronomy, he says, 40 years y'all walk with the same shoes. And they never wore out. Because I anointed the leather. That'll preach. I, 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 I kept you, even though I didn't elevate you, I sustained your present station. And I feel like I got to pause and give somebody an opportunity to, to, to give God praise. Because even though you have not been elevated, you got to stop and thank God that you wasn't demoted either. I, I, I got to thank God that even though I ain't going to the next level yet, he kept me right where I am. I'm still rolling. Can anybody give God a shout of praise right there that even though you haven't gone to the next level, this level ain't broke yet. I'm going to praise him and wait for my new car. But I thank God that I still got transportation. Oh, talk to me. I, I, I know I need more space and I know I need a new crib and I know I need, I need more room. But God, I thank you for the room that I do have. I, I know I need more money. But God, I thank you for the check that's been rolling in. I know I need something further. But I thank you for what's already I, 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 need, I need to show you this. I need to show you this because uh, there's a difference between Peter and Judas. Because when we see this, we'll say, well, they both denied God. And I don't want anybody to walk out of here thinking automatically that you're an apostate because you deny the Lord. The difference between Peter and Judas was their confession. See, Peter already knew that he was God. He just wasn't ready to deal with God. And God is okay with your, your lack of preparedness for his sovereignty. He's okay that you still gotta, gotta warm up to doing it his way. That's okay. That's okay. He, he has no problem with that. But Judas, when you, even, even when his, his heart was filled with remorse and he goes back to the Sanhedrin and tries to give them back the 30 pieces of silver, he says, I have betrayed innocent blood. Judas spoke of his humanity, not his divinity. So the thing that made them different was their confession. Peter said, thou art Christ, son of the living God. Judas said, he's just an innocent man. Now, the question 
that you need to wrestle with in order to determine whether, whether you really confess God as God or not is what you say about it. Because I know, I know folk that really fear God. They ain't living worth nothing. And they're going to get right one day. But, but they know God is God. I'm, I'm scared of you folk who've been in church too long. And who have grown so comfortable with God that you forget he's God. And he becomes your esoteric butler. No longer is he the sovereign savior of the universe, but he's just the one who meets your needs. He has to remain sovereign. Now, here's the crazy thing, though. When you get to verse 15, uh, verse 13, rather, verse 13, and this is where we're going we to hang our hat. Verse 13, 13 goes on to say, uh, uh, look, look what it says. If we are faithless, he just hits us. <laughs> if we faithless, not, not, we're, we're not denying Jesus. We're just faithless. <laughs> we in here, but we, just, we, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't worth too much. Because we're not, we're not doing what he called us to do. He says, if that's us, if, if we fall into that place, guess what? He's still going to be faithful. Because he has to remain himself. The scripture says he cannot deny himself. Here he presents to us a sharp dichotomy between human uh, propensity and Christ's divine sovereignty. Paul presents uh, our human propensity to be faithlessness and it leads us to the enigma of this text. What causes us to be faithless or to be unfaithful? What causes us to be unfaithful? I want to I lift these up to you, and then we can get out of the way. Uh, the, the first thing that causes us to be unfaithful is pride. The first thing that causes us to be unfaithful to one another, most certainly to God, is our pride. Listen to this. When you think of yourself more highly than you ought to, you render yourself incapable of being faithful to others because you're too busy being faithful to yourself. I will say it again. When you think of yourself more highly than you ought, you render yourself incapable of being faithful to others, God or people, because you are too busy being faithful to yourself. I would do this for you, but it will hinder me doing it for me. I would give you this food, but then I'm going to be hungry. I would give you this money, but then I'm going to buy my stuff. I would pray, but I got to check my status. I would go to worship, but I got something else on my agenda. So I'll see you next weekend. We have to understand that pride at the end of the day is simply us valuing ourselves above everything else. And I know some people say, well, you got to love yourself and you got you, you to gotta take care of yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. But when you, when you are so engrossed in yourself, when you make yourself God, you don't need God. You have dethroned God from the Lord of your heart and you've sat on your own throne. And you worship the altar of self. How do I worship the altar of me? You do everything you want to do. Everywhere you want to go, you go. Everything you want to eat, you eat. Everything you want to wear, you wear. You say what you want to say. You're going to do what you want to do. You're going to have what you want to have. And you're not going to let anybody stop you. Why? Because you've grown. Why? Because it's your money. Why? Because it's your time. It's your house. It's your car. It's your body. You can do what you want to do. But the whole concept of that scenario is you have become the Lord of you. And it's not all of our fault because we live in a day and age that glorifies self. We live in a day and age to where it is celebrated to not have people in your picture. 
it is celebrated not to even allow people the authority over your picture. I will take a picture of myself by myself. So much to where now selfie is in the dictionary. And I, I'll take a selfie of myself by myself. There's a whole industry of devices that has caused you to cut out every other person. I have light to illuminate my phone. I got a stick, so if I want to get my ambience, that I don't need you for anything. I don't even need you to take my picture, let alone be in it. I can do it all myself. But what this has done to our culture is we've made it think that it was just about us. And, and, and here, here's, here's, a, here's a shocking statistic. While teen pregnancy has gone down, teen uh, mortality rates have gone up. Well, so kids are not having as many babies with one another anymore. Now they're killing themselves at higher rates. Why? Because they, they've been lulled into believing that it's all about them. And they're all alone. And nobody understands. And they don't have anybody. But you got a thousand selfies. But it's all about you. See, we got to understand there's two sides to every coin. Be, be as individual as you want. Be as, as, as independent as you want to be. But you cannot look for dependence when you struggle. Because all of this dependence that you've called for, at the moment of your depression, you will be subject to the conditions that you created. And this is why more people are committing suicide. Not to say that they don't have anybody. Because there are a lot of people, that, 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 uh, instances that I've been given uh, of people that, that committed suicide. And the word was they didn't have nobody, they had nobody to talk to. But in reality, when you look at their situation, they had a myriad of people to talk to. But because they were so lifted up in pride, they didn't want to be honest. They didn't want to tell their story. They didn't want to diminish their personal standing. So take all the selfies you want, but you better make sure that you understand that if I make it all about me, that'll be all I have when I struggle. So how do we get over that? The first thing we do to get over that, we consider the value of God in those around us. We consider the value of God in those around us. Look at the people around you. You have valuable people around you. You have wise, intelligent people around you. I love Deacon Michael. He would say this all the time. He said, listen, family, everything we need is in the house. And there have been a, a variety of circumstances that have gone on in the church that people have brought to the pastoral leadership that we have been able to handle. Stuff that I didn't even think we had the capacity to handle. But when we made a call to somebody, oh, I do that. Oh, I have that resource. Oh, I work in this location. I, I do this. I do that. And we have been able to resource one another because we were able to consider the value of one another. Please do not devalue somebody because of what you don't know about them. I got to say it. You don't even know that I run a Fortune 500 company. Just because I ain't got a Gucci belt on every weekend, don't, don't think that I'm not who I am. Everybody don't wear their wealth. Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody don't introduce yourself, hello, I'm Dr. So-and-so. Every, 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 everybody doesn't tell you where they work, you know, on their voicemail. Every, everybody don't fill in their LinkedIn. There may be graces near you that you have no idea of. But first of all, we have to, we have to consider the value of God. And then consider the value of the people around you. And if we do that, we break pride. But here's the second thing that causes us not to be faithful. Passions. 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 Ah. When our fleshly desires are stronger than our spirit man, we will be unable to remain faithful to Christ or to others. 
This is why we have, we have to control our flesh. We have to, we have to find ourselves in a place where we are able to discipline our flesh. Because if, it, if your flesh gets stronger than your spirit, man, even if you really want to be faithful in your heart, your flesh will overrule. Paul says something amazing. He, he, says, he says, you know what, y'all? Listen, I know it's wrong to do it. And I said in my mind when I got up this morning, I wasn't going to do it. But a wretched man am I. Because the stuff that I don't want to do, I end up doing. And the very good that I know is good and I say in my mind, I'm going to do it. I end up not doing it. Why? Because there is a war in my members. He says, he says it's an enmity in my flesh. And you got to know that you will uh, militarize one side or the other. You will weaponize one side or the other. This is why, yes, you can listen to whatever music you want to listen to. There are no Jesus police in your family, in your life. Maybe you got some. There are no people that are going to say, stop listening to that. Stop doing that. No, no, no. We're not going to do that to you. I love music. I sample everything that comes out because I want to know what you're talking about. I listen, I, I, listen to, I listen to both Drake's. I want to know what you're saying. I want to know what you're talking about. But watch this. Drake not on repeat on my phone. Because I don't, I don't need to deal. Watch this. I don't need to deal with that, with, that, with that struggle. Are you riding? Are you with me? Will you cheat on me, Karen? I don't know. I don't need that worry. I don't need that headache. But if that's what you're constantly listening to, it will feed your passions. And so now you're looking at your mate strange. Because you've been listening to, are you riding? Are you with me? Do you want me? So now my flesh has fed my thoughts. Why, you, why we got to read the Bible? Why we got to listen to worship songs? Why we got to do this? Why we got to do that? Because it weaponizes your faith. Now listen, I mean, you know, I, I, when, when Karen and I are together, you know, I'm, I, I'll pull out the best part. You know, we, we, we'll play a little, you know, nice, you know, R&B music, you know. I'm, 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 we, we're not intimate to, I worship you, I live. No, I'm, not, I'm not playing that, you know, that's okay, amen. But here it is. What I'm telling you is you need to feed your spirit with things that will help you in the war time. I ain't telling you you got to play Sir Shirley Caesar at your next barbecue. Still here, mama praying, you know. You flipping the ribs. I'm not saying you got to do all of that. What I am saying is you better make sure you are weaponizing your faith so that when your flesh says cheat, you got something faithful as I call. You got, you, when, 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 your, when your soul says kill yourself, you got something that says I shall not die. But I shall live and declare that when you feel like throwing in the towel, you better have something in your soul that will resource you. Ain't nobody trying to put no police on your ears. I'm trying to help you in wartime. Because we got blanks in our guns. And we're trying to figure out why we why we still in depression and why we still in defeat and why we still go around the same circles. Because you have not given your spirit anything uh, to beat the devil and to beat your own flesh. Why we, why we gotta fast sometimes? Why we gotta pray? Because your flesh is too strong. If you can't stop yourself from eating a hamburger, your flesh is too strong. If you can't drive past in and out and keep driving, you're like, I don't even care. I'm going to wait 35 minutes. I'm going to wait in the line. You can't beat your flesh over a burger. How you going to beat your flesh over a booty that ain't your wife's? I can't even defeat in and out. How am I going to defeat this Instagram queen? It's all in my DM. Hi, Pastor Taylor. How you doing? Oh, I just loved you at that revival. You spoke a word into my life. No, ma'am. I defeated that burger, and I'm going to defeat you, too. (laughs) 
You think this comedy, this is testimony. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. At Greater 4K, meet this person. We met her at Revival. You remember her? We must deny ourselves while simultaneously engaging in spiritual disciplines. Now, here's the thing, because I've seen this, and I, and I, and I want to defeat this right now. Fasting is not starving yourself. Because I've seen a lot of people be defeated in fasting and prayer because they think it's just starving. No, he'll come and beat you up worse than when you're full. If you just starve, you might as well go and eat a burger and be done with it. So it's not just about not doing the bad stuff or not doing the stuff that your flesh desires, but simultaneously building up your spirit with spiritual disciplines. This is why prayer and fasting and study and devotion and discipleship are so important because you need to have a balance, not just a balance, but you need to change the scales to where your spirit is stronger than your flesh. And we're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to have spiritual discipline. We're going to be some strong. I declare, I just need to speak this into the atmosphere. We're going to be some strong people. We're going to be people that we hear our prayers answered. We're going to have powerful marriages. We're going to have prophetic children. We're going to have households where the devil don't even want to come to our house because he know he's going to get his head knocked in every time he come past our door. Come in here. I beat and fasted you out of here. Come on in here. Touch my children. I beat and spoke in tongues and killed your whole spirit. I wish the devil would try to come and mess with Listen, I love God. Do you? You're going to have strength in the spirit. You're going to be able to walk and not be weary. You're going to be able to run and not faint because you've waited. Last thing, we out of your way. We got to rebuke procrastination. <laughs> procrastination. Now, here, 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 here's what it is. Because we, Elder Mo, we had to go, uh, we had to go deeper than usual. Because I know, I know, when we say procrastination, we talk about laziness, laziness. Oh, you lazy. That's why you're not doing nothing. But when you study this thing, and even when you go to the scripture, you recognize that there's something deeper than just laziness. Here it is. The root cause of procrastination is fear. 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 Y'all don't believe me. Go to the scripture. The, 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 when Jesus begins to talk about the parable of the talents. And the one who had five, he took his five, multiplied them, came back, said, Master, look what I did. Said, oh, you good, good, good job. One who had two, Lord, oh, master, look what I did. Oh, take, take, went to multiply, went to the city, had made, made some business deals, everything would look good. Oh, you multiplied it, great, good job. The one who had one talent, the Bible says he took it and buried it in the ground. Now, the giving of the talent signified that they had a certain level of ability. So it's not to say that he was just lazy or he didn't know how to do it. But notice his response to the master. He said, hey, man, why you didn't at least take my money? and put my money in the bank and get some interest. He said, man, I'm afraid of you. You are hard master. And I was afraid that if this thing didn't go right with your talent, you was gonna mess me up. I could maybe lose my life. So it wasn't that he was lazy, he was just fearful. And I'm willing to bet that many of you have not made the move in your life that you know you need to make because you're afraid of what's on the other side of the move. Am I talking to anybody in the room? You got the plan, you got the idea, you know who to talk to, you know who to call, but you just scared of what may happen. And justly so. But Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, if, if, you, if you're afraid, you won't sow. I, can, I, can I prophesy for a moment? I'm, 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 I'm believing God 
that some of you, when you conquer this fear in this season, you're going to see one of the greatest harvests you've ever seen in your life. I know it's scary. I know you're throwing caution to the wind. I know you're doing something that nobody around you has ever done. I know you're walking into a realm that you've never walked in before, but you have to defeat your fear by saying, God, I trust you with my life. We defeat procrastination through, through swift acts of boldness toward our destiny. Listen, I know this bed is comfortable. I know this house is comfortable. I know this job is comfortable, but God, I feel like you're calling me to walk on the water and the only way you can walk on the water you gotta get out of the boat I don't know who I'm talking to in this room but I feel a Paul Morton anointing on me you gotta get out of the boat you cannot stay in the boat and see a miracle you gotta get out of the boat some of you been praying God I want to see a miracle I want to see a miracle I want to see a miracle but you standing on the Monday God, I want to see you do something you've never done. Well, I need you to get in a place you've never been. You can't see me do something new from the old place. What Jesus say? I can't give you new wine if you still got these old wine skins. Some stuff we got to throw away. Some stuff we got to transition out of. Some stuff we have to change. And I know it's scary. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you're like, what if, what if, but what if the deal don't go through? But what, but what, what if, what if something don't happen? What if, what if, what if, what if they break their promise? What if they lied? What if it's not what it was? Above all this, we understand that even if people are unfaithful, Jesus says, even if y'all are unfaithful and even if the world is unfaithful, guess what? I'm still faithful. <laughs> this is where somebody's going to shout because I have assurance uh, that even though I don't know how it's going to end up, uh, if I just love my God, uh, if I be faithful to my God, uh, I ain't got assurance uh, that the business plan is going to work out, uh, but I got faith in my God uh, and Jesus is faithful. Uh, is there anybody in the room this morning uh, that says, I believe God. I know he's faithful, so I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm going to take a step on my future. I'm going to take a step into my destiny. I'm going to go on and get this license. I'm going to go on and file these papers. I'm going to go on and take this class. I'm going to go on and put this application in. I'm going to go on and take the next step because God is faithful. I don't know what you're going into, but I came to tell somebody this is your time to take a step forward don't be scared of what's on the other side can I tell you like the grandma would say it be not dismayed whatever be tired for God will take care of you is there anybody in here that says I'm about to be faithful I'm about to move forward. I'm about to go into this marriage. I'm about to go into this business. I'm about to go into this degree. Because even though I don't see the other side, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but a holy lean on Jesus' name. Because on Christ the solid, rock I stand I wish I had a church here is there anybody beside me that's about to make a move anybody beside I'm about to live my best life I'm about to take a step into the unknown because there's something on the other side I don't see there's something on the other side I don't have but I believe God I declare faithfulness over you faithfulness over you you getting ready to go into a school you've never been to. Getting ready to go into a job you've never been in. Going into a relationship you've never been in. And it will, be, it will be the enticement of the enemy. And it will be the comfort of your flesh to tell you to go back to how things used to be. 
let me tell you right now, it's only two, there's only two voices that will tell you to go backwards. Yourself or the enemy. The Bible says that God goes from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You have the ability at this present moment to access your destiny. But you have to apply faithfulness to your life. So we rebuke pride in the name of Jesus. We rebuke our passions in the name of Jesus. We rebuke procrastination in the name of Jesus. And we are going to see God unlock riches. And I'm not just talking about tangible. I'm talking about joy and peace and boldness. and con- Man, I feel, let me tell you something. I feel this in my spirit, and I'm going to pray for you. Uh, I feel this in my spirit. I feel like God, ah, I hear this, Elder Mo, and I need you to help me pray this. I feel like God is unlocking a spirit of boldness over his people. Yeah. I feel this heavy in the room. Well, some, some of you have, you, you, have been, you have literally been terrified to make this next step. You've been terrified. You, 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 get, you, get, you get shakes. You, you, you start convulsing. You, you, it, it, your heart rate is elevated because you're so nervous about the next step. But I hear God saying, if I'm the God that gave you the feet, I'm the same God that will give you the strength to make the step. And if I'm the God that created the earth under your feet, I'm the God that can keep you on top of it. Swift acts of boldness. Some of us will have to throw caution to the wind. You've done all your calculations, you've done all your planning, and there's some of you that you've already determined in, your, in yourself, you heard God say it, but it doesn't equate on paper. And you're like, okay, God, well, I, you know, I trust you. I just don't trust these numbers. <sighs> this may not be everybody's word, but if you know I'm talking to you, I hear God saying, cast your bread upon the water. <laughs> Make the step. Take the step. Take the step. Don't be afraid here. Because he says, even if the situation is faithless. I'm faithful. And so if if that was your own, if all your faith was in that, then yeah, you have reason to be scared. But my faith is not in that stuff. My faith is not in the relationship. My faith is in the God of the relationship. I had somebody ask me once, you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not afraid your wife is, you, you, you go out and you preach, you've been going all over the, the world and you traveling the country and out of the country. You're not afraid somebody go, somebody go tip on your wife. I was like, listen, more than I trust Karen, I trust God. I ain't worried, I ain't worried about her tipping out on me. I love Jesus and he loved me and he got this thing and I got a chip on her too, but that's not that, you know, that's another story. I know where she at all times. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Just looking at all the husbands. Hallelujah. I'll talk to you about that later. Uh, you have to trust God. It's going to be very new. I feel him. I feel him in the room. It's going to be very new. It's going to be very scary. And you will be tempted like Peter to look at the wind. You will be tempted like Peter to look at the waves. But here is the whole gist of faithfulness. To keep your eyes on Jesus. This is what all faithfulness is. Keeping your focus on Jesus. Notice this, as long as Peter looked at Jesus, he did not fail. And as long as you keep your eyes on Christ, as long as you keep your focus centered on the sovereign, you will see great success. Can I pray for you? Can I believe God for that in your life? Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl in the sound of my voice. Father God, first of all, we repent of every space in our life where we've been unfaithful, where we've lacked fidelity and we've lacked consistency. God, we renounce our pride today. We renounce our pride in the name of Jesus. God, teach us how to be humble people. Teach us how to be modest people in the name of Jesus. Father, every passion, every, every fleshly desire that's not like you, rebuke it. Remove it from us now in the name of Jesus, God. We, we, we declare it yours in the name of Jesus. We lay it all at this altar right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up to you our procrastination. We've learned today that much of it is not just because we're lazy, but much of it is because we're, we're afraid, we're fearful. But God, we even give you our fear. And so while our destiny, from a carnal perspective, it's uncertain. We, 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 we're not sure how it's going to manifest. God, we know that you are faithful. And we declare just like Peter, Lord, if you bid us, we will come. So, Father, for every man, woman, boy, girl, every, every young person who stands on the precipice of a new season, Father God, I pray right now, you bid us to come. With tears in our eyes, we'll come. We're, we're, as, as scared as we may be, God, if you tell us to do it, we'll do it. We'll move. And so as we keep our eyes on your faithfulness, teach us how to be faithful. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did anybody receive a word from the Lord today? Stand with me, pastoral team. Stand with me. Join me here. Listen, this is a good day to give your life to Jesus.